What is art intuition? Why does it matter? And what's one skill you can train to vastly improve every piece of artwork you ever do? Well, let's find out. Hey everybody, JK here from Animator Island. Today I wanna to talk about art intuition. What is that? Well, let's start by defining regular intuition. Intuition, noun, the power or faculty of attaining to direct knowledge or cognition without evident rational thought and inference. Yeah, that's really not helpful. Put more simply, intuition is a feeling that guides you toward ideas without you consciously thinking about it. For example, if you drive a lot, after a while, driving becomes intuitive and you don't have to think about where to put your hands or what to do with your feet to get you from your house to the grocery store. Artists also have intuition and it helps to not only speed up the art creation process but also to produce better art. If you've ever watched a master like Milt Call animate, you'll see them putting down lines and shapes like magic, seemingly without any plan but still producing incredible results. These artists have art intuition. Now, some people say this is a natural ability. You're either born with it or you're not. And I think that's kind of only a half truth. The full truth is that yes, some people are born with a natural talent towards certain forms of art. They might have an eye for composition or proportion or even just physical skill. But here's the thing, even those of us like me who aren't naturally gifted at art can train up their artist intuition. So there's hope for those of us who maybe weren't born with it. So how do we develop our own personal art intuition? Well, here's three exercises that you can apply today to vastly increase your own skills. Number one, design some appealing shapes. Here's the easiest of the three exercises, but be careful because sometimes when something seems easy, we just skip it and it won't work that way. Appealing shape design is absolutely essential for every form of visual art. But as animators, we need to keep in mind that no matter what kind of animation we're doing, eventually it's gonna get flattened down onto a screen and the audience is only gonna see it as 2D shapes. Yes, even if you're doing 3D animation, they're only ever gonna see one angle, which means that all you're really working with is shapes. For this exercise, fill a sketchbook page with shapes that you think are appealing. What does that mean? Well, appeal is the trickiest of the animation principles to nail down, but essentially it relates to what is pleasant for your audience to look at and absorb. So for example, I think this is a very appealing shape, but this is not. If you draw an appealing shape, think about why you find it appealing. And if you draw one that looks like a ragged mess, Think about why it doesn't appeal to you in the same way. Do a ton of these shape exercises. Each time you create an appealing shape, you're building your own intuition, which will help you in the future to make even more appealing shapes. It's kind of, again, like driving a car. You build the intuition to drive well each mile you go down the road. In art, that's called pencil mileage. Number two. Do some animation studies. Our world is filled with amazing animation. We've been at this for over a hundred years now, and so many masters have come before us. So learn from them, analyze some animation, take it apart by scene and look at things like arcs and shapes and timing. Even better still, learn from an artist and animator who is already doing that. Ferdinand has some great videos just like that for you to get started with. So if you're not sure how to analyze animation, well, go check out that video. Each time you analyze an artist who has come before you, you are building on the foundation that they've already set. Think of it like building a tower. They've already laid a firm foundation, and now you get to come along and put your own designed house on top of it. It's a smart thing to do to learn from those who came before you. Number three, iteration, iteration, iteration. Are you familiar with the term iterative drawing? 
It's actually the big secret that separates great artists from not so good ones. Well, it's not really a secret, but it's surprising how many people don't know about it. Iterative drawing is essentially taking one design or concept and trying as many versions of it as possible before you either arrive at something amazing or pass out from exhaustion. Side note, don't actually pass out from exhaustion. Uh, your body needs rest. We're designed for it. So make sure that you set aside some time to not do work. If you're interested in the subject of burnout, Animator Island has some articles on that, and you can find the links in the description below. Here are some examples of iterative design work from the game Mythic Ranch Card Battles by Weekend Panda. It's actually for the sequel to that game, but whatever. I started by doing pages and pages of rough creature designs. From there, I picked a few that I liked best, that I thought had some potential, even if they weren't quite there yet. Then I set to work doing at least 20 iterations of the original design to see how I could make each one more appealing. Sometimes the final art looked almost nothing like the original, but that's the beauty of iterative drawing. You aren't satisfied by just one or two ideas. You're freely trying dozens or even hundreds. Now, for some of us, this is tricky because if you're like me, you want it to be right the first time. You just want to be able to make that pose or do that shot and have it done in one go. Yeah. Well, I'd like a pony too, but sometimes that just doesn't happen. Because the truth is, we all have to do iterations of our work if we want the best results. Even professionals do this. Now, the good news is, the more you practice iterative drawing and the more you build your artistic intuition, the quicker you arrive at the great work that you know you can eventually do. Right now, we're still in the training stage, which means, yeah, we might have to do it 20 times before we get it right. As we develop our intuition, we might have to do it 10 times, and then five, and then there will come that magical day when we can do it in one go. Maybe that day never arrives, but the point is, you'll have less work to do in the long run if you work on building your intuition now. I hope you've enjoyed this look at art intuition. Now there's one more thing to discuss, and it might be the most important thing of all. None of this matters if you don't do the work. What I mean by that is, I could make a thousand more videos about iterative drawing, and you could watch all thousand of them, and it wouldn't make a difference. Because the only way you're really going to get good is to do the work. You have to approach things like these exercises with the intent to do them. You can't just watch them. And the same goes for YouTube videos. We have so many great tutorials out there now, but I watch as artists only watch the videos and then don't actually apply them. So the next time you watch an animation video, follow along. Uh, do what they do so that you can get it into your skill set, so that you can build your own art intuition. Because that's the only way to do it. You gotta get the pencil mileage down. You can't just consume you also have to create. That's about it for today. If you're interested in continuing the learning process, I recommend this video or this one. Uh, all the links to these are in the description below. But keep going. Don't stop where you are because only work will cause you to become the greatest artist that you can be. And as usual, like and subscribe because uh, Animator Island will have many more tutorials that you can follow along with in the future. That's about it for today, so we'll see you next time.